the mark is still in the, in the middle. Now you can see on the other side it's kind of like off center. So this we will put through the the bridle, just put it through there, close the soft shackle and then the bridle is hooked onto the chain. So this is the restrictor knot. So this will be through the bridle and you can see you can really really pull hard and the bridle will not be able to to move. So the bridle is, is hooked onto this side here and this is a rounded chain. We are two crazies from South Africa. That's Frick and Pietru. We decided to chuck it all and we are now living and sailing full time on our new home, Sisu. Well, I'm getting ready <laughs> to go on a, a long trip. It's not that long. It's maybe five to six days. But um, the last two days, you can see, ooh, maybe you can see like this. Got this super tan, sunburned, <laughs> and I'm sweating like, I don't know. But the reason is every single stainless steel that you see here, that, 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 all of this and they were getting lots of surface rust because the last couple of weeks we it just been actually a couple of months we were just sailing 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 so there's a lot of these things and i i wanted to get it done because if we go on this long passage all that salt water and salt spray that's going on there it's just going to make the rust impossible to contain so it's always a good idea to put all of your um, stainless steel just before you go into a patch and i think it's going to be <laughs> upwind so then all of these things are getting so soaked in in salt water and salt spray and even at the back if you're tacking a lot then yet the back is just salt spray as as a turbulence is just deposit all the little droplets and uh, spray over here so make sure that all of your well i made sure so <laughs> you can do the same if you want but yeah there's a lot of stainless steel around here and they're all now shiny no more rust specks nothing no more yellow dots Okay, we've got <laughs> some chaos here and our water maker is acting up again and you know before you guys say oh it's a spectra <laughs> I like the spectra and I think I found a problem so over here so I disconnected the product line from here and I discovered that during the flash period salt water is coming into the water Okay, this is it It's still relatively dark outside There's a storm on this side So although the sun is actually technically supposed to be up already If you see there where there's blue sky or not that many clouds, you can see there's something there. But while we at this view, that's Daniel Key. So this is it. Start of my solo sail. And the target is going to be, the final target destination is going to be Puerto Rico. Um, I will do now some day, day, day hops, day sail hops. Stay sailing hops. What is it? I don't know. Comment down below if you know. <laughs> I'm going to do day sailing hops or day sail hops um, on the, over the bank, and because of that, I would rather go in the dark uh, in in a day. And I can this this route I've done already a couple of times, so I'm not that worried that I can do it at, in the, in this early in the morning. But it is a long way to go for me now. The wind is already, if you look there, the wind is already 11 knots. That's a true wind. Oh, 12 knots. 
so that is sailing um, wind <coughs> of course it's coming in a right in the direction where I need to go I need to go around this point here so now it's coming from the nice side but the moment I turn if you look here so that yellow thing is the direction of the wind and after that point there yeah, after this point here I need to go in the direction of the wind isn't that fun it's always like that okay the reason why I started in a dock well it's, a, it's this far but <laughs> when when the plants switch on their lights it just made the voltage of the battery drop below 12 volt just just like that and then the alarm went off battery low volt low volt battery alarm went off so it's going to be overcast again and I have to start the engines and I decide well if I start the engines I can just as well use this little bit of charging the batteries to have the propellers run as well and <laughs> be underway I was supposed to start at 10 o'clock but when the tide is high but now maybe for the good because I will reach the banks when the tide is high oh, this is technically the banks but I mean the one that the unknown ones to me I will reach that at the high tide so that might be a good thing not a big tide it's 70 centimeters at this moment okay they are still ragged and then from the day of, after the ragged from there is going to be maybe one overnighter to Great Inagua that's the last bah Bahamian island and then I will do like wait for the right weather window but yeah that's going to be normally the guys are running out of fuel because they're using so much fuel to get there and I would like to sail there um, so we'll wait for the good weather window and see if I can do that without too many engine hours but um, that will be five days motoring or nine days sailing because it's upwind everything is upwind and then there's this question of that storm all the predictions shows it will fizzle out before it comes here GF says it's going to be a hurricane but and it's going to go up north so it's not even going to reach the caribbean like bvi and antigua those places um, so before antigua it's going to go up st martin and those places okay this is the plan i'm talking too much because i'm very anxious <laughs> okay not great wind but it looks like we're doing something and just to show you that <laughs> I'm monitoring that um, we are sailing mine is still on the reef one and it's mainly because <laughs> I still don't know what this guy is going to do and I saw some sun <laughs> look at that so we have got some sunshine <laughs> while the rest and is you can hear the thunder I'm not sure you guys can pick it up on a mic but the thunder is is there and I got the warning that the closest one was two kilometers from from me in preparation throwing out the trash so clean sisu inside prepare the lights so they don't dangle also made sure that the dinghy is secure so I've got the cross line over here got the rest line like that well not the cross this is almost like a spring line so it cannot go like this and then another spring line going there um, so a lot of preparation I also cleaned the hull uh, so the, the, we should be fast <laughs> as, <laughs> if we have wind and I checked the weather 
so I need to get out of here um, and the problem is to the south is Cuba and we don't want to be caught here when a hurricane is coming and there was already a very close call now I, well it's still the verdict is still out um, that system is going to come here at the round I want to give you guys a nice show not looking my face um, so around the 24th that system will be here and so there's still it's about six days from now so good warning and I decided I need to run so first I'm going to go closer to the raggeds and then anchor somewhere there for tonight and then from there jump over to to Inagua great Inagua Island and hopefully if I'm at Inagua I can jump between uh, Cuba and Haiti if I need to I can I can run um, that way so that's the plan for now and then wait and then wait for it to to see what pans out and what the weather models is going to say at this moment all of them is all over the show they start to agree with each other that the system will run through the, the uh, basically the Bahamas uh, it will start here at BVI and run through that all that island chains all the way here but by the time it comes here it should be dissipated uh, it will not be a hurricane anymore but a lot of wind but you never know it's still six days and I don't want to be caught here so I would rather go down and be ready to go south um, <laughs> if I need to so that's why I'm moving and it's a nice sail we're actually sailing no engines just sailing a relaxed sail and this is going to be a complete new route for me um, I've not done this route before this part I've done for the next say five miles but normally then you go through the cut and you go to Georgetown I'm going to go south of Exumas and the Great Exuma Island and then go over the banks to to the raggeds or to that chain of islands over there so I want to do that in the day <laughs> it would be better okay that's it ah and the sun is now gone oh man I need to watch this thing as well yeah it's moving fast and it's and is it going to that system or is it a complete new one this one whoa that one is rumbling a lot so normally we will go through here and and then we go to the other side tuk, 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 through that cut there but Today, I'm going to take the route past that, past that, and then past these little rocks and things. And I will sleep there tonight. And tomorrow, <laughs> go through these, these cuts here, and then over the bank, making sure we miss a couple of shallow spots. And this is normally the route down to so you normally go through this little cut here, the, the hockey, hawk cut, and it's a notorious difficult cut. Oh man, it is really, really very difficult. But um, so I'm coming now from this side, and then from here we will go either go down the water key, where we, we can see we anchored here already a couple of times. We anchored here a couple of times. So either anchor here at Water Key and then from there go on. Or if the wind is good, depends on the prediction, then go all the way to
the great Inagua Island. <laughs> okay, I think the rain is here. <laughs> At least we can now sail a little bit faster. We got now 12 knots of true wind speed. So we can go a little bit faster. But yeah, the rain is in front of me. It's over there. I cannot see it over oh, there. I can see a little bit of the island. And in this big one, I think I was sailing too slow. So it's catching me. But now I think I might match its speed. <laughs> it's still sailing. This main is still reefed. So, but we off. We're doing actually quite good, seven knots. Ha. I need to look at my speed lock. Hmm. So maybe that's my work for tonight at anchor. Okie dokie, I have to reef the, the Genova as well. I even let out the main a little bit. Depower the main. And it's lighting everywhere. Not good. This side, you cannot see much, but ah, that storm got us. Oh man, but yeah, <laughs> we got now about 17. If you look here, the parent wind's about 20, so I can actually let the Genoa out, but because we're in this, in this storm, I'm going to leave it. Reefed, um, but are we doing not too bad? Apparent wind angle. I reduced the, the wind angle as well, so that we have even less power on the my uh, on the sails. So we are pretty reefed, <laughs> slowing down the boat. But I'm not sure I want to slow the boat down. Just this storm if I can go ahead of the storm or maybe I should just stop completely and let the storm go but there's no wind Shit. I took you guys out of the safe again <laughs> um, not sure if either can zoom in but right over there is a water spout water spout and when I start seeing those things, I decide not to run for the storm anymore, but actually to go right back. And I'm heading now, trying to get to the other side where there's, the le where there's less rain. For the small, wow. Because it's not nice to try and outrun the storm and it keeps on coming at you and coming at, at you and you see lightning everywhere. So I thought best to, wow, that thing actually is touching the island there. My goodness. I see at the bottom, maybe it's something else I'm seeing, but wow. Okay. <laughs> so I want to, I just want to get through this. And hopefully if I can get there, I can follow the storm and not try to outrun it. Whoa, that is really now really, really touching. I'm, kinda, I'm not sure I can see where I need the point, but yes, like it. I toffee. That must be very scary to be close to that thing and I cannot see a thing in front of us <laughs> I can only see the radar so I switched off all electronics and except for the instruments um, so all the AC uh, 220 volt is off all the instruments, uh, all the DC, 12 volt DC st Oh my goodness. That thing. Back to the drawing board. So I just want to get through. And hopefully no lightning strike. I even got the 
the magnetic compass out and start getting my bearings like this. And this one is set on true. So this is the true north or true degrees and this is magnetic. So I can see a 350 here is actually 5, 6 degrees here. So I'm just going to take a note of that. If something goes wrong and I'm inside this, I still know which direction I should go. Okay, the wind just got a big one up to 30 knots there. And there was a lightning strike, not less than three seconds. So that was less than a kilometer to that direction. Um, yeah, it's getting real. Okay, I'm on the other side of the storm. I turned around and I can hear, I can hear the thunder, but I don't see it anymore. So <laughs> at least that is good. I also put now the Doppler on. So this radar has a Doppler effect. Everything that's green goes away from you and everything that's red is coming for you. So these green ones is going away so that's going faster than me but i'm going faster than that part there um, yeah so maybe i'm still going i'm now sailing so no engines are on we're doing that not much four knots of wind so i'm doing oh i think i'm just drifting now <laughs> There was, there was some wind just now. Yeah, I will, guys, I will slow down to a stop. But there's wind. I think it's both the sails are up. Huge rain catches. I think they get a nice clean if I look at it. Hmm. Should I start the engine? Or should I wait a little bit more to get out of this storm? This side I feel much more safer. There's definitely less lightning. Well, I don't see lightning. On the other side, man, I saw lightning hitting the sea all the time. So I think this side of the storm is, I feel safer here. <laughs> For some reason. <laughs> the strangest thing is busy happening. I'm, I'm just on the outskirts of the storm is moving that way, right? So the storm is now in front of me and maybe like that. So it's, I'm going just, just behind the storm the whole time. And then the wind will die <laughs> because we're going very fast, I think. So we will go fast and then suddenly and just need to watch out for that rock. Um, so the, the wind will go pick up. We will pick up speed like crazy. And then I think we get too close to the storm and it will stop. The wind will stop and we will start floating, floating, floating and the, the log speed will go down to two knots. And then all of a sudden we will have a gust of wind again and we go fast again. And look how dirty these, these lines are, man. We need to clean the lines a little bit. Shoo. I don't see the rock. Just as I said, hold on and <laughs> check. Wind is up again. And I need now to make definitely sure we're missing that rock. Because the rock is still here. <laughs> so I, I will let, let this storm just like drag me, drag me, drag me all the time. Because otherwise, other thing is, it's I will be anchoring in this rain. Not going to be nice. So for now, I'm actually happy to go behind it. Um, and it still looks like my arrival time is still good. Sorry, I'm not looking at you, I'm looking at the rock. That dark spot over there, right here, that is the, the rocks. And this is why it's important to do this in daylight, because it is marked, but not 
hundred percent accurate. So you have to you have to know they are there and then do something. Oops, the wind is here. Let me quickly run. Okay, it's time to tack and I managed now to find a different way of tacking. Um, first of all, we don't tack 90 degrees. So I'm not looking there, I'm looking like at my 120, more or less. But look at your 120, the direction you're going to tack. If there's any obstacles like rocks or sandbanks or people or boats, mine is quite clear. And then what I do is I put us on wind vane. So press the wind vane button and I like it to be say 46 to 46 or 45 to 45. So I'm I'm at 40, 46 at this moment, it's fine. I'm going to press these two buttons, the minus 10 and the minus 1 at the same time. The direction I want to tack, that's the two buttons I'm pressing. If you want to tack that way, then you need to press that side of the two buttons. Logic. Okay, press the two buttons. It asks me to, uh, to tack the port. It's fine, I can say okay. Then. I'm not going to, I can, I can release this one, but keep tension on this one, because if you don't, there's a serious lot of tension on that sail. So I'm going to wait, and I'm opening the, my foot, my foot thing there, okay, there it goes. So I'm going to let it go through, there's two, two turns on this winch. Okay, when it's past the mast, then I go of that one. Make sure this one is completely loose. And I'm bringing it tight. I'm now at this moment 45 to 45. So it has to be pretty, pretty tight. Look at my speed. Hmm. Not, it was not that good one. My speed is still three knots. Um, well, I started off with five knots of speed, so, and this is it, done. Now, prepare this one for the next tack. So you have to close that thing there. You have to close that, make sure that um, all these things are closed, so that you don't accidentally step on it and <laughs> lose a finger. So we don't want to lose fingers, and that's it. The blue line is the course over ground and the black line is where we're pointing at. So we're pointing this way but we're actually sailing on the blue line. And we want to get those two as close as possible. For that I'm going to try and increase my speed. I can see the wind is still not... We still have like 3 degrees of wind that we need to get. The moment we gain some speed the parent wind will move forward. You can see the orange one is the parent wind, the yellow one is the is the true wind direction. So it's calculated, the true wind is calculated and the, and the parent wind is that thing on the mast. So the one from the mast that's is... That's what the boat is seeing, so that is the orange one. So the orange one there is the parent wind. As it goes, as we go faster the parent wind will start moving forward. So I'm looking at my parent wind angle and making sure that it doesn't go too far forward. And if it does, I want it to stay on 40. Then I will just adjust left or right. So that we can increase the angle or decrease the angle. I just see here in front of us Oh, it's a bank. Okay, so it's 5.6 and you can see here comes the line 5.6 5.5 5.1 4 4.8 4.5 4.2 <laughs> A 1.5 meter 
raise that's like a dune a, a huge dune down here so it raises up and then just drops like that i just finished anchoring and it was not that it was actually no current so it was much more easier and this is rock point the whole island <laughs> And I'm not sure what those islands are, but this is Rock Point. And just me in this anchorage, the whole anchorage, just Sisu and I. I should go bury some treasure there, because not many people come here. Hmm.